I don't think he really sinks in. No, I still, it, I'm still thinking he's, he's really. going to knock on my door. Tone. Yeah, I, Tone. I can still see him doing that. No. What would you say to him if he did? Well, probably have a go at him for all the worry he's caused. <laughs> <laughs> and give him a big hug like you do. Say, thank God you're all right. The last last time I see Humpy, he said, I'm going going back to Scotland. I just opened the door, let him out. He's just walking out. I said, I love you, Humpy. He looked round, he said, I love you too, bruv. That's it. That's me and uh Yeah, that's Mark, yeah. Do you know much about his life in Glasgow? No, I don't. I, he, we don't I've know had, anything about I've that, had a few we? stories he's told me, you know. He, he said, yeah, my mate's going to take me to see Glasgow Rangers. I thought, oh, nice one. I thought he was doing all right. It's not knowing, isn't it, what, how we lived up there. I mean, was he hungry? Was he cold? Well, he was it? hungry, Mum. He was, when he used to come down, mate, we'd, we'd be up till six, seven in the morning just chatting about old times and chewing the fat, you know. And he said, like, you don't know what it's like to go in bins and search for food and that, you know, and, and that really kick the you know stomach out of me to think that he's got you know he had to do he that. He didn't say anything like that to me. He always yeah. made out he was all right up no, there. No, he weren't, Mum. He weren't. He weren't. They knew Humpy had mental problems, but the help weren't there, and I weren't qualified to help him. All I could do was give him support and love as, as his brother. You know, I loved my brother. Oh, I loved him. And he loved me. He could be a Pain in the arse, but at the end of the day, that was Mark, wasn't that was it? That was Mark, that was Umby. I'd be anxious about it, to be honest with you, but it's something I've got to do. I've got to go and see where he died. I won't rest until I can see where he died. Excuse me, love. My, my brother died, and I'm trying to find out a bit about his life up here. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm, I'm one for faces, and that's a face that I don't know. Mm. How would you cope though every day on the street, mate? It can be all right, but there's been a, there's been a lot of deaths when it's been cold. They've knocked a lot of the hostels down and built a shooting accommodation. Yeah. One of the only ones that are left is the Bell Grove. And you reckon that's a Diabolical place. Aye, if he if he went there, he would turn me and walk out. Yeah. Aye, is that, that bad? Is that bad, Barry? Yeah. My worst enemy there. I mean, they have offered me that like God knows how many times, and I keep getting them same answer. I'd rather sleep in the street. Hello, David speaking. Hello, David. This is uh, Mr. Tony Starr. So I hear you knew my brother Mark. Some colleagues of mine uh, met him. Yes, but obviously we're really happy to talk to you. Oh, that's that's fantastic, David. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, Mark was often in here. I he was well known. But the first thing that strikes me is that how much he, you remind me of him, just really? with your uh, your accent and your yeah. your look. Um, we used to gently rib him about his accent as well, which was quite a laugh. We'd always, oh hello, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember him as a really resilient character, Mark. He, he was living in really tough circumstances on the street, would always come in the worst for wear, under the influence often of, yeah. of drugs and alcohol. Um, but always really respectful. You know, sometimes we would see him every day for two or three weeks, and then we wouldn't see him for a month. People yeah. often aren't ready to get support from us because yeah. they're in the too strongly in the grip, of, the grip of addiction. But we always just reiterate, when you are, we'll always be here. And Mark wasn't ready to get support yeah. from us, but we always let him know where we were, and he was always came in. And then sometimes you'd see him when he was more ready, and that was really nice to see, and he could make a bit some progress, so. I was like tracing his footsteps yesterday, walking around, meeting the homeless, and some of the stories you're hearing is just harrowing. It is brutal, and he was at the lowest, the hardest edge of it. It's 
And he's 40 you and your brother. Yeah. That's the last photo of I had of him. He just kept his self to himself. He wasn't a troublemaker. He was quite funny. He kind of uh, see people that were decent and civilised. Yeah. That's who he stuck to. Yeah. But yeah. there was also scumbags. Yeah. You had to bring into the crowd yeah. now and again and see if you had to inject yourself yeah. and you OD. The bastards will run away and leave you and oh. take you for everything. I've just been given a sleeping bag because there's no accommodation for me. Well, I just tell you, give, give you that and today. just get Fuck on with off. it. Fuck off. And it's sad and you can see the sadness in your eyes. You can see the heart. I'm so sorry for your no, loss. Please. Lovely to meet you, love. May God be with you. You take care. Just the, the raw, rawness of being homeless has really been brought home to me, doing, you know, doing this, yeah. And thinking that Humpy had to go through this, how does that make you feel? It's heartbreaking. No, it's, I, I don't like to think of my brother like that, you know. I think of the good times we had, not the times that I'm finding out now, but, you know. There you go, Hunt. There you go, bruv. I love you, Hunt. God bless you, brother. Funny, it feels like I've said goodbye to him now. And I know one day I'll see him again someday. But you keep a space for me up there, Humpy. Take care, bruv. I love you. Hello. Hello, mum. Hello. Are you all right? Yeah, oh, I Yeah, I scattered uh, Umpy's ashes. Oh, good. He's up here. A part of him's up here now. Yeah. And yeah. no, yeah, yeah. When was it? About three weeks ago, I was uptown, and there was somebody sitting outside a shop doorway, and I went a few steps, and I thought, no. Tight. I did go back and give him some money. I thought that could be Mark mm. sitting there. It does make you stop and think. <laughs>